Hey there friends, welcome back to my channel. Are you ready to get a bit sophisticated today? I hope so because I asked on several social media platforms, what are your sharky questions? And many of you replied. So I picked a couple questions and I'm gonna answer them today. You see me squinting, it's because I took off my glasses so that you don't see the glare, but I don't have any more contacts and that's on poor planning. Mad Scientist asks, can you talk about how and why they accumulate urea in their muscles? Yes, I can. They accumulate urea in their muscles because it's basically a water retention mechanism. The salt water in the ocean is saltier than the water that exists within the shark's tissues. And what we know about water is it wants to dilute the higher concentration. So it wants to leave the shark's tissues in order to dilute the salty water of the ocean. Now, if all the water leaves the shark's body, that's really bad. The shark will die. <laughs> but if they increase the urea concentration within their tissues, and urea is basically just a nitrogen waste product, then it kind of evens out that concentration gradient a little bit more so the water doesn't just leave the shark's body. Basically, this urea buildup is important for them to stay hydrated. The way that it builds up is when they're breaking down proteins, that nitrogen waste product that occurs, the urea, basically, they just retain a bunch of it in their tissues. So it builds up in their muscles and in their bloodstreams, and it keeps them hydrated. Because hydrate or dihydrate, this is your reminder to go drink water. <laughs> FNAC42 asks, do you think sharks hate whales because they're kind of the new kid in the oceans and sharks have been there the whole time? This is a hilarious question. I feel like it's like a jealous little kid finding out that they're like getting a sibling or something and now they're not gonna be the center of attention anymore. <laughs> like, no, I was here first and now all the humans are giving you attention and that's not fair. I mean, obviously I don't think that sharks hate whales because they use them as a food source or maybe that's why they use them as a food source because they're angry. I'll ask a shark next time I see one. <laughs> also, I bet that like whale sharks and basking sharks and megamouth sharks, because they're all filter feeders, have a different opinion on whales. Also, I wonder if there's clicks, like, like if sharks and whales are gonna be friends, that it's like the filter feeding sharks and the baleen whales and then the toothed whales and the like predatory sharks. Like great white sharks and poor beagles are hanging out with the sperm whales and the beaked whales, but the whale shark, the mega mouth, and the basking shark are hanging out with like the blue whale or the humpback. You know what I mean? Someone needs to turn this into like an animated show where there's like different cliques, but like different animals fit into those different cliques. You could go so far and add like all kinds of different taxa in this. Like with mammals, you could do herbivores are in with the filter feeding crew and then like tigers, your carnivores are in with the other like hyper carnivorous sharks and whales. I'm not an animator. I just come up with dumb ideas. So someone needs to take this and run with it, please. <laughs> Carolyn says she wants to learn more about the thresher shark. And I love this because as we know, the thresher shark is my favorite shark. So let's talk about thresher sharks. When I say they are my favorite shark, I'm technically referring to three different species. There are three species of thresher sharks. There's the common, the big eye, and the pelagic, and I have a very hard time telling them apart. But the common thresher shark has an uncommon ability that the other two thresher sharks likely don't have. They have cranial endothermy, basically meaning that they have this heat retention system in their head to be able to keep their eyes and their brain warm as they're diving into really cold waters, potentially for food. And that's really cool. But the coolest thing about all three thresher shark species is their tail. Their tail makes up up to about 50% of their entire body length. So if you have a 20 foot long thresher shark, 10 feet of that could be tail. And what they do with that tail is they use it to kind of scorpion whip over the top of their head to stun and kill prey. I have a beautiful felt thresher shark that someone made for me. I love this thing so much. It sits on my desk. I've had it for years. Basically what they do is they you know, swimming towards a bait ball and they whip over the top of their head. And whatever's over here that they've whipped with their tail, they've stunned it or killed it. Then they can just kind of leisurely go through and see whatever's not moving. What a weird way to hunt. Most sharks are hunting with their face and this one hunts with its butt. Also, thresher sharks look like they realized at 11.30 p.m. that they have homework due at midnight that they have not started on. They look so nervous all the time and I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Dapper NB13 asks, what was that one study about sharks and music? I remember someone saying they seemed to like death metal. If I am not mistaken, I'm pretty sure that this was a Shark Week episode, not a, a published paper. I could be wrong. And if anyone finds a published paper about the type of music that sharks like, please share it in the comments because I want to read it. <laughs> but basically it was saying that like heavy metal would probably be the best music to attract a shark. The reasoning behind it is that sharks sense vibrations and electrical fields. Then they put a speaker in the water that is, you know, 
electric, and they play death metal, which probably produces more vibrations than most other types of music. So this feels like a struggling injured fish in the water. Of course it's going to attract a shark. Again, I tried to find a paper on this. I couldn't find one. I'm not saying that I don't think that death metal would be most likely to attract a shark more than most other types of music. I just would love to see the numbers behind it. So if anyone has found a paper about that, or has a link to whatever video this was, please share it, I wanna know more. <laughs> Robin asks, what's unique slash interesting about shark immune systems? And Jaylene said, I second this one. So we definitely have to talk about this. There's this belief for some reason that sharks don't or can't get cancer. And I don't really know where that idea came from. Because if you think about it, even if we'd never found a shark that had cancer, that's probably because one, they don't have cancer treatments like we do. So many of them probably didn't survive as long as sharks that didn't have cancer. And two, studying animals in the ocean is really hard. We don't have access to them all the time. So it's entirely plausible that a shark that had cancer and lived out in the middle of the ocean would simply never run into a human being. Now, I saw an article from about 12 years ago that showed a picture of a shark with a tumor or a growth. The poor thing had it on its face. Now, of course, without taking a biopsy, we won't know if the growth was actually cancerous or if it was just an abnormal growth. But if they can have mutations and abnormal cell growth, why wouldn't they be able to have cancer? But this is a really interesting thing to think about. This is a conversation with elephants as well, where they just simply happen to get cancer at lower rates than we do. I don't know the answer as to why that is, but it's very cool. And finally, we come to our last question. This is from Helen on Blue Sky. Helen asks, are sharks intelligent? Do they have social behaviors? And the answer is, yeah, some of them do. Scallop hammerheads migrate in groups and groups of sharks are called shivers, which I think is very fun. Some smaller sharks like the white tip reef shark will also hang out in groups. I like to call them cuddle puddles, but they rest during the day and then they hunt at night. Dogfish are well named as dogfish because they exhibit pack hunting behavior like dogs. And if you needed another reason to think that dogfish were cute, that's it. Dogs are amazing. Any relationship another animal has with a dog, I'm here for it. That said, please don't randomly pet a dogfish. <laughs> That's not a smart idea. Another example, basking sharks exhibit this weird, like, following each other behavior. And that sounds really creepy now that I'm saying it out loud. <laughs> Basically, they can gather in these aggregations of many, many, many basking sharks, and sometimes they follow each other, staying kind of behind and off to the side of one another. One paper suggests that this is something to just help with hydrodynamics during their swimming and feeding, which I don't exactly know how that works, but what I'm imagining is like when you draft on someone in Mario Kart. <laughs> But they also mentioned that maybe the adults take advantage of these huge aggregations to find a mate during that time. They're already all in one place. You may as well search for a sweetie at the same time. Another cool one is that lemon sharks actually exhibit social learning. One study took a bunch of little lemons and trained them to perform a certain task, eating from a target. You touch the target, you get fed. They then put an untrained lemon shark in with the trained lemon shark so that it can kind of observe what the trained friend is doing and maybe pick up on some of those behaviors. They also put an untrained lemon shark in with another untrained lemon shark. There are no trained behaviors to pick up on. So they basically wanted to compare these two groups, untrained paired with trained and untrained paired with untrained. The untrained lemon sharks that were paired with trained lemon sharks were able to touch the target and get fed more quickly and more frequently than the ones that were paired with other untrained lemon sharks showing that lemon sharks are picking up behaviors from their peers. Social learning. Kind of like if you grew up with older siblings, like how I did, you learn very quickly what you can and cannot get away with by learning from your older siblings' mistakes. Now, I'm sure that there are other behaviors like warning or territorial behaviors or mating and courtship behaviors that other species exhibit as well, but a lot of shark species are pretty solitary, so it's kind of hard to find them together or with other sharks. Now that I've answered some of your sharky questions, hopefully, if you get asked one of these sharky questions, you can share the same information that I did. Impress and educate your friends and family with super cool shark facts. It's what I do every day. Are they sick of it yet? I don't know, but I also don't care. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you learned something new and had a little fun at the same time. And as always, have a great day and stay sharky, my friends. Yeah? yeah? Okay, well, I appreciate that. Blooper real high in day.